Hello again, this is Preheat. Welcome back to another World of Warcraft video. So we finally got access to the new talents on live now that pre-patch is actually live. And uh, with this revelation, these new talents, we're seeing that there's a lot that's different than what we tested on the beta and even on the PTR because it seems like some of the bugs that were present on the beta that maybe influence how we play this certain way, uh, it seems like a lot of those bugs have been fixed. I'm going to kick this off by just saying if you're looking for the best spec to play in raid, I don't necessarily think it's arcane anymore because uh, Frost is actually looking quite good and Frost doesn't really have any of this weirdness, any of these new rotational things that you have to consider. It's also very straightforward. So if you're looking for whatever the best setup is just for raiding, I recommend playing Frost in raid. Uh, but arcane is not bad. It's just that arcane is going to be a little bit behind Frost in single target and arcane does have an edge whenever it comes to cleave. But obviously Frost also has a decent amount of cleave too. So if you're looking for whatever the best spec is for Mage in the pre-patch, you're probably better off just playing Frost for Raid. And then in Mythic Plus, you can play either Arcane or Fire. But if you're looking for a build that's going to do well in Cleave as well, especially like for target Cleave, Arcane is really, really good for this. I just wanted to start this off with that disclaimer so that you had the information so that you could know maybe, maybe Frost is the best option for you. But let's say you want to stick with Arcane, right? Uh, let's talk about how Arcane is going to be different in the pre-patch versus live. All right, so the biggest change to Arcane is that clear casting procs are down. So on the beta and the PTR, we were getting a lot more clear casting than we should have. Also, we were getting less clear casting on Arcane Blast, and this talent was giving us less clear casting as well. So it was all backwards. Now things are flipped. They fixed the bugs. So now we're getting clear casting procs on all the spells reduced, but we're getting more clear casting with Arcane Blast. And now Illuminated Thoughts actually gives us clear casting procs instead of reducing them. So this is a very good talent. And since clear casting is just harder to get in general, it is more important that we are playing around our clear casts with like a, a, a more conservative approach. Okay, so the talent builds aren't really changing. The, the only thing that's really changing here is just make sure you have illuminated thoughts. Make sure you slot this one in. And then obviously if there are three targets, reverberate's a great option. Otherwise you can go energy reconstitution. This is the one that's gonna be flipping back and forth. And if you're playing arcane for some reason in single target, which you should just play frost in that case, but let's say you just really love arcane, okay? Uh, what you'd want to do is move Arcane Cleave over to Consortium Bubble. Arcane excels at Cleave, so what we are looking to do is play for the, the case where we can play to our strengths. So that's going to be Arcane Cleave here and usually Reverberate as well. In terms of the rotation and how it's changing, it's really easy to summarize, okay? We're doing a lot more blasting and we're doing less Arcane Barraging and we're being more conservative with when we drop our, our charges and, uh, and how we're doing that as well. So there's going to be two different sets of rules okay in one case we're above 70 percent mana in one case we're below 70 percent mana and that's going to be for the enlightened talent so we are going to be playing around enlightened and mana is also going to be an issue now again something that we actually have to pay attention to uh, so all of the rotational stuff that i covered in the previous video the one that came out like 11 days ago all that stuff is still going to be true but you need to add this on top okay we're going to be avoiding casting stuff like orb, clear cast, and barrage just generally if we're above 70% mana because we're trying to spin the mana and use more bless. And whenever we're below 70% mana, that's when that rule goes away and we're looking to maybe be a little bit more conservative unless evocation is coming up in about 30 seconds or less. So if evocation is coming up very soon, then we don't really have to worry about our mana anymore. We can just spend all of our mana because we're going to get it all back right away. But if we're above 70% mana, we do want to spend more, okay? Below 70% mana, if evocation is not coming up soon, then we still need to conserve our mana. So essentially, we are reintroducing the whole idea of a conserve phase for Arcane. But in practice, it's going to be very, very similar to what you're used to. Okay, so I'm going to run you through the opener, and this is going to be very similar to what you're used to. But I am going to pause during this and slow it down and kind of talk about all the little things that might change. Uh, but obviously, on the opener, we want to start the same way we always start, which is by getting our mirror images out so we don't pull aggro. And then we're going to pre-evocate. That's going to be before we actually start damage. Now, obviously, if you are holding your cooldowns for some reason on the pull, then you would not want to evocate here because you would want to time your evocation with the rest of your cooldowns. You want to typically use evocation with Arcane Surge and also with Touch of the Magi. Uh, but so we're going to pre-evocate here. This gives us a clear casting and one Arcane Charge. The boss is going to be pulled with missiles here. So I'm going to missiles here and then also use my orb right afterwards. That's going to bring us to four charges. Now, in this moment, this is where, you know, we're popping like bloodlust and drinking our potion and using our Eardus Fragment or our Ashes Trinket, anything else that we have on use. So we're going to use all of our on uses, all of our steroids. We're going to get our, our damage or into as high as possible. And we're going to cast Arcane Surge here. This is with two Nether Precision buffs. The Nether Precision comes from the clear cast I spent earlier. That was the Arcane Missiles. So this Arcane Surge is going to finish, and as this Arcane Surge is finishing, 
I'm going to queue up an Arcane Barrage and instantly touch the Magi. So that's going to spin my four charges, spend one Nether Precision, and it's going to instantly refill my charges to four. So you'll see it happen right here. I'm at four charges. The Barrage goes off. I'm at zero charges. I spent one Nether Precision. I'm back up to four charges before the Arcane Barrage makes contact, right? Because there's a travel time. And now I have one Nether Precision. I've got clear casting available. So what we're going to do right here is we're going to actually cast a Blast into Barrage. This is where the first change comes into play. You're not going to be barraging here unless you have a clear cast available or an orb available. In this case, I will not have an orb available because I used that on the pre-pull. So unless I have the two orb talent, it's not going to happen, right? So I need to be looking for the clear cast buff here. And you should have two clear casts here, usually. I mean, if you, unless you had like really bad RNG, you should have two. But there are cases where you may only have the one and you spent it already. And now you have no clear cast and you're in this situation without a clear cast. In that case, you would continue blasting, okay? That's the first change, right? We would just continue blasting because we've got Arcane Surge up and uh, we, would, we would not want to be stuck in the situation where you have to build back up to four charges. That's the whole point of this. So we do a blast into Barrage right here. That spins our last Nether Precision twice because the blast is queued into the Barrage. So both of those are happening at the same time. We both get the benefits there because the spells look at on cast complete if it consumes uh, the Nether Precision, both of those benefit. And since I have a clear cast here, I can spin the clear cast. So I'm going to use that missiles. now. Here's another thing where we need to talk about missiles. So missiles, we're going to let fully channel if we are not at four charges. However, if we are at four charges, it's a different situation, right? If we're at four charges, we want to cancel the missile as soon as possible so that we can get right back into the action. We're only using the missile really for the nether precision or for the arcane charges. If we are not getting the arcane charges from missiles through high voltage because we're already at four charges, that value is diminished and we would then cancel, we would clip our missiles, right? So... Right here, I use my missiles, and I'm going to use Arcane Blast here. Now, I have two Arcane Charges, so I'm going to be able to use Blast Blast Barrage again because, look, I have clear casting, right? But let's say I only got one charge, or let's say I don't have a clear cast. In that case, I would continue blasting, right? This is where we're talking about doing more blasting, right? So uh, obviously, in this case, I'm lucky because I have the clear casting, and I've got two charges, so I'm going to do a Blast Blast Barrage here, just like, you know, just like on beta, and then we go right back into missiles. Okay, so right here we're missling, and during this missile, I only got one arcane charge. Notice this. So because I only got the one arcane charge, instead of doing the blast blast barrage like we would normally do, since I have a clear cast available and everything else is good, uh, I would actually just do two blasts. Right? I don't have an orb, so I can't go from you know less than two charges up. Uh, so our only choice here is is really just to do two blasts. And then after the second blast, I would channel this missile and I would clip it as soon as I hit four charges. And uh, that way I could do a, uh, a blast into Barrage. But we're, right now we're basically at the end of our cooldowns, right? Like as soon as our cooldowns are ending, because we don't have the Splinter Storm talents, we are looking to press Shifting Power as soon as possible, but we need to wait until Arcane Surge is gone and also Touch of the Magi is gone, right? So uh, just keep in mind that you're using Shifting Power a little bit later because you don't want to use it in your cooldowns anymore because we don't have the beta talents yet. That's another change here. So to recap, if we have no nether precision and we have a clear casting proc in single target, we're going to be using arcane missiles. If we already have four charges or if we reach four charges, we're going to be clipping that missile early. Okay. We're going to be using arcane barrage if we have max arcane charges and we have nether precision up and uh, we, we already have like another clear cast or we have like an orb or like some way to get back to four charges, right? We're looking to ar arcane barrage if we're able to get right back in there. So clear casting, if it's available and you got your nether precision up, you got four charges, great. You can spin that barrage and then you can use the missiles and you can get right back into the action. Or let's say you don't have a clear casting, you know, and you have an orb, then you could spin the barrage and then you could send the orb and now you're back at having arcane charges again. And then if we have nether precision, we are spending arcane blast. We're looking to do the arcane blast twice into the barrage if that's available, but obviously it depends on if we're allowed to barrage or not. You know, we have to consider whether or not we have an orb or clear casting if we're able to get right back in. And if we're above 70% mana, then we're going to be way more aggressive with just spending blast, 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 blast. But we do still care about one little buff you need to pay attention to, which is my arcane tempo buff. Now, I don't have it right here, but I'm just going to skip ahead. This arcane tempo buff, make sure that you're tracking this. Make sure that you're aware of it. If your arcane tempo is about to fall off in like a GCD, you need to make sure that you just brush. Okay, that is the one time where we just like break from all the rules we talked about. If we have Arcane Tempo and it's about to about to expire, we need to keep Arcane Tempo up. So let's go over it again. So pre-mirror image, evocation, same as before, right? Use the missiles, send the Arcane Orb. Right here, I have my int fell off. 
ignore this. This is just because I didn't realize I was AFK here at the target dummy practicing. So uh, yeah, obviously you want to always have int up. But yeah, so we're going to arcane surge here. Use all of our trinkets, racials, everything. Get our characters buffed as possible. We're going to send this arcane surge and we're going to barrage into touch of the magi like we talked about. Boom. And now we have a clear casting proc. So we're going to cast a blast into barrage here for that last night of precision. Blast into barrage. Boom. And now we have a missile. So we send the missiles and we have four charges so we could clip that early and then we can do a blast blast barrage. We still have missiles. So that's good. We send the missiles again into another blast blast barrage. Basically, if we're above 70% mana and we don't have a clear casting, we don't have an orb, we don't have a way to get right back into the charges. We don't have a way to get back into the action. If we're missing all that stuff, then we would not press the barrage unless Arcane Tempo is about to expire, right? But here, uh, my Arcane Tempo is fine, so I'm just going to keep blasting. I'm above 70% mana, so we're still good. And I'm going to send this missiles, and I'm going to clip it, and then we're going to get this Arcane Tempo reset right here, boom, with the Blast Barrage, okay? And then right here, I have Arcane Orb coming up soon. All my cooldowns are on cooldown except for that. In AoE, I would want to make sure I hit Orb, but here I can just Shifting Power. Um, I think I actually opt to, to get the Orb as well in this. So Blast Blast Barrage here, that resets. I'm going to use the Orb, and I'm going to Shifting Power. So after that, uh, you know, cooldowns are coming up uh, relatively soon. We've got 47 seconds left on Evocation. Touch of the Magi is coming up soon. So we have a clear cast here. We've got another Precision. Orb is coming up soon. So we're very, very free to use Barrage here, right? So we're going to do the Blast Blast Barrage into the missiles here, into another Blast Blast Barrage. Now, here's another critical point where we need to talk about something. So Touch of the Magi is coming up very soon. If Touch of the Magi is coming up soon, you probably should avoid casting Arcane Barrage unless you have a way to get right back into it. Okay, so I would say like as a general rule, whenever Touch of the Magi is coming up soon, let's say like five seconds or so out, you're probably going to want to not press Barrage just so that you can try to have four charges instantly and use Touch of the Magi like right away. The big thing is like we need to press the second Touch of the Magi, the one that's the small one. The one that doesn't have Surge, doesn't have the Siphon Storm, we need to press that right away so it lines up with the big one later. We don't want to off-sync our cooldowns. But I, I opt to spin here because I have an orb, so I can just get right back into it and a clear cast. So I spin the clear cast here. I've got four charges. I've got two nether precision, so I'm going to use Touch of the Magi here. And this is where I would just keep blasting, unless I get a, a clear cast proc, right? Because Evocation is going to be coming up in about 37 seconds. I've got plenty of mana to burn. I can just burn through all my mana, just like Blast, 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 using missiles and only using Barrage really to just reset the, uh, the buff on my, uh, my Arcane Tempo and, uh, and just doing that until Evocation comes up and then I just repeat the whole thing. That's, that's pretty much the rotation in single target in a nutshell. Um, again, it's basically the same as what we talked about with Splinter Storm and Beta and more Clearcast procs, except for we're just like doing a lot more blasting. We're trying to be a little bit more careful with when we Barrage. But obviously, if you're taking this into a cleave situation or like an AoE situation, you now have a new tool. You have Arcane Explosion. So that changes the game. We don't have to worry as much because Arcane Explosion is going to give us, uh, you know, a decent clear cast generator. And it's also going to give us a lot more Arcane Charges. So we don't have to be as aggressively conservative with when we brush. So, yes, just to summarize, big changes for single target, less clear casting. We still care about resetting our tempo buff. So we're going to be making sure we brush for that. But otherwise, we're only really trying to barrage if we're doing like the Blast Blast Barrage and we have a clear cast available or we have an Arcane Orb so we can get right back into it or we have some way to get those up, maybe like Shifting Power or something like that. Um, but yeah, anyways, so that is the new rotation in a nutshell. Make sure that you talent into Illuminate Thoughts. Very important. Generally speaking, though, again, I, if you're raiding, I recommend just playing Frost. It's, it's way easier, okay? Way easier. There's less to consider. And it just does more single target damage. So just go that route if you just want an easy way. But if you're looking to play Arcane, it is very good in Cleave still. Very, very good. So if there's bosses that have Cleave, it could end up like outperforming Frost in that situation. Um, but if you want to play Arcane, if you're just like practicing for the beta and you don't really care about your numbers in the pre-patch, you just want to be able to play whatever's going to be best in beta, then it's probably good to learn this rotation. Just remember that it's going to change again because once we get Splinter Storm back, we now care more about another Precision. Also, we're going to have like more orbs coming out and, uh, you know, it's going to be generally easier. There'll be le like less caveats and all this like little nitty gritty stuff, uh, hopefully. But we'll obviously have to cook the APL a little bit more to see what ends up being the case. But anyways, the last thing I want to cover is stats. So in the pre-patch, we actually do want uh, a little bit different stats than on the beta. So on the pre-patch, I am recommending that you go for uh, versatility, crit and haste. You should be able to kind of hit all three at the same time. Uh, it's going to be like versus is really good, but, um, you know, it depends on the target count. I'd say like a good balance is like 
maybe let's say uh 5000 verse maybe 5000 haste and then maybe like 5000 crit just like get all those stats up really high and then just whatever is left over is in mastery but we don't really care about mastery we we should have enough stats in the pre-patch if you're geared up to like basically have crit haste and verse all be high uh but it's always best to just sim your own character see what the sim tells you but you know i recommend using like the corrupting rage file i recommend using whichever rune the sim tells you but generally it's probably going to be either haste or crit for the rune and uh, for trinkets, obviously, if you have Iridus Fragment, that's great. But if you don't, just pick up Ashes of Ember Soul. And then for the other one, you can just use a Stat Stick one, or you can use Belarus. Up to you on what you prefer. Um, and obviously, everything else is kind of the same here. Oh, and embellishments, uh, Zone of Focus. Just run Zone of Focus for everything. But yeah, that is Arcane in the pre-patch in a nutshell. Hopefully, this video gives you enough information. If you are still lost, if you don't know what uh, to be doing, then go watch my beta videos on Arcane. They have a lot of information. Uh, obviously, you, you want to go with this one for the actual rotation and pre-patch, but those will give you more background in what the actual abilities do. And if you're still lost, just go check out the Arcane Guide by Perm. It's great. Go check it out. This is uh, going to give you the basics of Arcane. Obviously, we're talking a little bit more at like a, a lower level here. We're talking about the nitty gritty things, but this guide is going to give you a good introduction to how to play Arcane. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my content, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.